Have you experimented with making your own collage papers yet? The possibilities are endless, so I'm going to show you just a few of them. Hi there, I'm Janine, I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. A great way to add depth to your paintings is by adding collage papers. You can easily create your own by using pretty much any medium on paper. I'm going to show you how I create slightly transparent papers that blend in with your canvas. For my collage papers today, I want to use wet strength tissue paper. It looks just like normal tissue paper, but it takes a lot of liquid. I'll link the one I use down below. It comes in really large sheets, so what I usually do is I just cut them down to like this kind of size, which is um, a little bit bigger than A4. On my work surface, I've put some freezer paper. If I work with a lot of liquid, then that won't mess up my workspace because this has got kind of a plasticky coating. With my collage papers, I often like to do things on them that are a little bit more difficult on a large canvas or another kind of work surface. For example, I really like wet in wet on paper, but that's a bit more difficult to achieve on the canvas. So I'm going to make some collage papers using wet in wet technique. And it's best to use quite wet media for that, obviously. So I've got some inks here that I want to use got this sepia and magenta and I've also got some white. These two are Liquitex and this one's a De La Rowney FW. I've got a couple of other colours here in case I want to do that, use a few others. So first I want to mix a colour because I don't want to use the pure magenta on this. I'll do some without the white first. And I'll add a little bit of water to make it more, even more liquid and not as intense. But I could do with a bit more of the sepia. It's better, that's more of a brownie colour. And then I want to wet my surface. And the quickest way to do that is to just use a spray bottle with water. And you see it soaks up quite a lot of liquid, but also underneath it gets quite wet. That's why I put the freezer paper underneath. And then I'm just going to make some marks with this ink on here into the wet surface. And one thing you'll find with the tissue paper is it crinkles a lot and creates these kind of effects. put that aside to dry. You see it leaves a lot of liquid and paint underneath. Then I want to try a few colours together. So again I'm spraying it with water. I'll add some yellow actually this time. And then mix some of this. Because of the texture the paper creates, it's not working as well as a uh, wet and wet on a more of a watercolour paper. I'm also going to take some of this onto a new piece. And what I really like about the tissue paper is that when you add it to a painting, it will become kind of transparent. And I'm just going to wet the whole surface with this kind of tinted water. I do warn you, it, is, it does make a big mess. And then I'll add some white. And spray that a bit. Next 
time to do something simple that you can easily do just with a brush and any kind of paint. So I'm going to use, um, I've got this pre-mixed blue. There's a video on how I mix that. I'll link it up here. I just want to do quite a few energetic marks with my brush. I've got this uh, really long thin brush, which I think is a bit like a sign, sign painting brush. I need the paint to be a little bit more liquid for that. Just make some really energetic brush strokes. Maybe I add a second colour even. This yellow that I've mixed. I've still got some of the blue on here. And I'll do another one with the yellow. And then I've got this brush, which is it's got very cheap bristles. It's from the hardware store. It's kind of plasticky, thick bristles. I think that could make some quite interesting marks too. And I'll do one with a lighter colour. I'll use this more neutral colour. That's nice and quick. One really cool thing you can do with these is use water soluble media on them, like soft pastels. Because when you fix them to the canvas, these papers, with something like a gloss medium, they will kind of turn transparent. So that means whatever you got on here, you will also see from the other side better than you can now. And water soluble media is always a little bit difficult to fix on the canvas, I find. But if you paint on paper first and then stick that to the canvas upside down, you will kind of see through it and it's already fixed in place. And I've been loving using soft pastels, but I do have the issue that it's kind of not fixed very well. I'm just folding them and rubbing them again a little bit just so the dust doesn't go everywhere. And it goes into the paper a little bit better. I don't know if that works, we'll see. I'll do one more with this blue. I could even try and dissolve them a little bit. So you do see some of the marks go, but also it's a bit softer. Or you can use a wet surface and then draw into that. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Another way to take advantage of the transparency of these papers is to fill them with a transparent solid colour and then on your painting you can and abuse it as if you were glazing it. So you just have a solid transparent layer. For that, I'm going, I've am going. i got this gloss glazing fluid, which just makes your color a little bit more transparent. And also it, it gives you more drying time. But actually in this case, I do want, to, want it to dry pretty fast. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to use um, some water. That will dry much faster. So I'm going to use that blue again kind of start by wetting the surface a bit already and then taking just a little bit of the paint and covering the page. But of course it will have the texture of the paper again. You can make some areas a little bit more solid and some areas a bit more transparent. And I want to do that with a couple of colours.
The last thing I want to show you is creating some papers with my jelly plate. I've been a little bit obsessed with it lately, so I do want to incorporate that into my larger paintings as well. And I think e the easiest way to do that is, is with collage papers. So I cut a few that are a little bit smaller. And then I've still got the larger ones, but they don't quite... They're a little bit too big for the plate. So I'll start with the smaller ones and then we'll see. Here's another pre-mixed colour. So I want to add kind of a gradient, so I'll take some of this and then some of this yellow. I really like the little dots that you get here. I'll take one also from that maybe even a bit off to the side let's add some of this blue and kind of mix that all together to lighten it so I'll add some white Scratch into that a little bit. And over that I'll add a little bit of yellow. take one of this ghost print with a little bit of the edge really like that I also want something a little bit more neutral and maybe catch this here See how that picked up a little bit of that edge. I really like that. Mm, I also love that. And I'll do one. I'll add some beige first and then some colour into that. And I think a little bit of yellow. Maybe even some blue. I want to catch that here again.
and then I'll scratch to that some lines. Just put that on this here. And I've also got this crazy piece. The possibilities really are endless, and I always end up with so many more collage papers than I could ever use. Have you made collage papers before, and how do you make them? I would love to know in the comments below. If you want to see me use some of my collage papers, you can watch my video that I've linked in the description box. Thanks, and bye bye.